when you first got to the league, who was the first person to bust your ass? John Crotty used to fuck me up. Karate. I he know Karate. He, he, he was in Utah? No, he he might have been in Seattle, Seattle then, I think. Okay. Hmm. But he just, he used to fuck me up. <laughs> like, like, John like, Karate. I'm like, I'm like, I'm looking, you know, you look at him like, you look at him like, oh, he ain't going to do, do nothing. Nothing. He had a hurt. He was herky-jerky, and he, um, I mean, Van Axel, I used to, I was never a defensive player. Yeah. But, I mean, uh, Quick was tough to guard, too. Nick the Quick, quick that left hand shit. Yeah. Woo-hoo-hoo. And Special. LA, yep. That was tough, too, man. I know your pops wanted you to come to Cali and you chose Arizona, but could there have been anybody else that almost got you? UCLA was probably two. Yeah. And then maybe Duke was three, but Duke Duke was way too far from me to go. I wasn't I wasn't even thinking about that. But yeah. it was you know, after top three, that was my top three. Yeah. Hmm. One of my favorite coaches is is Lou Oates. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like every time you see him, he's like the same person with mm-hmm. the same smile, <laughs> with the same personality. Hair, yeah. and then, Her and is perfect always dude. perfectly <laughs> yeah. swung right. Uh, to play for a coach like that, like and I always hear players just rave about him and how good a person he is. How was that for you to, you know, choose Lou, Lou Holtz to believe in you? It was good because going in, you know, they are already established and stuff like that. And, you know, he let it be known that I was going to be starter coming in just after practice and stuff. And just everything, I mean, not even, not even the stuff on the court is what made him a good guy. Like off the court, he, I mean, he, he cared about you. You know, mm-hmm. you go in there, talk to him anytime you wanted, um, tell him anything, and, and he treated you like he was one, of, like you were one of his kids. And, yeah. and that's what made it so easy to go there. And, and uh, his wife Bobby, rest in peace. Yeah. She even made it easier. You know, yeah. I was a mama's boy back then, and she just made it. She just made it yeah. easy. Yeah, made it made you comfortable. Yeah, yeah. To make the run, Arizona, <laughs> to make the run for the championship. Come on, man. No disrespect, but nobody had Arizona. <laughs> I, I, we did. We were trying to. The funny thing is, we went in that zone. We went. I think we went 500 in the Pac-10 back then. So mm-hmm. we were like, "Damn, I hope we get in the tournament." <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah, you know, we end up getting a we end up getting a four seed, and we almost ended. We almost ended up losing the first two games uh, to Carl to Charleston and maybe South Alabama. And it was just tough, you know, and Coach Olsen comes out and tells me, like, Mike, I need you to be you. Mm-hmm. You know, I was passive, a freshman playing with juniors and sophomores. Right, yeah. I'm passive, and so he was like, I need you to be you. And that's when I kind of, like, kind of switched in my head, like, okay. Yeah. And then we played Providence, I think, first, either Providence or maybe Kansas. And that's when I was like, okay, this is what I got to do. And, yeah. and that's when it clicked for me. How did your draft process go through? Vancouver ended up taking me. Yeah. Played my time, and like I said, I got drafted. I got traded to Sacramento. So I'm, Micah Heisley, the owner, was like, you know, we're moving to a new place, and we're probably going to start over. So where would you like to go? So I gave him five of my top teams, and he's like, where's the number one place you want to go? And I told him Sacramento. And, like, draft, and the next draft, I, you got, I'm in the work. It's like 2 o'clock in the morning. I'm working out. And they're like, you got traded to – um to Sacramento, I was like, bullshit. Yeah. I went to my car, I called from Sac, you know, you get traded, you get a call from yeah, you get a call. one team and the other yeah. team you're going to. So I was like, oh shit, it happened. Yeah. And it, it was the best, it was the best thing that ever happened to me. The difference between you playing in Vancouver and the difference between you playing in in Sac, what would you feel like the difference is? Cause I know as a the opposite team, mm-hmm. it, it was like, <laughs> damn, he done, we done fucked up. He done got somewhere where he comfortable and he, uh-huh. you a threat. They may, they, the, the thing is, I never knew how I'd get taken by going there by, you know, White Chocolate, Jace Williams was a, was a big fan time thing out there. Yeah, yeah. fan and favorite. To get traded, I didn't know how the team would take me. I didn't know how the fans would accept me. And fans, and the team made it so easy. It felt like I've been there for ten years. So yeah. it just made it. It made it that easy. To have a team like that, C. Hmm. Well, <laughs> yeah, like Flotty. That's, that's a championship team. Doug Christie, like y'all had all the pieces. Everybody knew their roles. Mm-hmm. Like, how was that to to have a championship team? To be in that era where y'all the ones that was competing for the championship. It was fun. Was it was fun to see that. Tell you or that. Just play away from. I've never, uh, cause I was used to back then. You throw in the post, 
it was different defensive rules too. You throw in the post, go stand over there, they go mm-hmm. double, you get the shot. Because we had country, big country, Reed, Brian yeah. Reeves, yeah. So our, our, we always played inside out. Yeah. And so going there, I remember the first day of practice, I threw it in and I run through. Ball, I had to duck because oh, it don't hit me in the head. Web and body right. throwing yeah. that dog. So Coach Carell, rest in peace, he was like, Mike, she's going to hit you in the head. Make sure you turn around and look. Because I yeah. Vancouver, you pass and just go run over there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So coming here and being there in Sacramento and everybody could pass and every, no one cared who. Yeah. We knew Webb was going to get all get his points every yeah. night. But out of everybody else, it was, it might be your night tonight. Might, might be, be somebody else tonight, yeah. tomorrow. So um, it was it was good just to win. Tell us about them wars y'all used to go to against with the Lakers. The Lakers was the three P champions of the era, but they had to go through some wars to get there. It wasn't just a cakewalk. It was a championship that we should have got out of that because um, game seven, we go to game seven, we shoot two for thirteen from the three and under fifty percent from the free throw, mm-hmm. and going to overtime. You know what I mean? So that just I just, just shows you that I think I I know we were a better team that season. Yeah. Maybe the years before, years after, maybe not, but that year we were the best team I think in the league yeah. all the way around. But going there was just fun to play. You know, I playing in front of all the movie stars and you know the yeah. rabs and all that stuff, and just you know that gym is so damn quiet anyway. You could hear what anybody says to you, yeah. and it was just good that like. They used to get on me because I used to talk a lot of shit when I got out there. But um, <laughs> they just—I just hear stuff and just get me, just get me going and get me going. I, I love playing. Like, that's probably one of the best teams I love playing against because I knew going there it's gonna be it's gonna be a movie. Yeah, y'all had like the little Euro connection with mm-hmm. Peja, Turk, and Vlade, and Vlade was one of the best personalities. Like, what was it like? Being teammates with those guys and just seeing how they was how they how they brought the thing and then I know Turk was hilarious. I definitely got to get a Turk story. But like, do you got any funny Vlade or Turk? So I feel like Pedro was probably the biggest adult out of the three of them. Yeah, I mean, but Vlade kind of showed me how to be uh, like when I went to Atlanta, I was kind of like Vlade. You know what I mean? And he's just he joking all the time. Joking, I went in the locker room one time to go to the bathroom. He was smoking a cigarette before the game. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, somebody smoking. I just see him over here like, I said, ain't no way, buddy. You smoking before the, right before the game? He put it out and he went out and played. But he was the, he's That's probably crazy. one of the best teammates as far as he was, no matter what kind of game he had, he was going to be the same person when the game was over. Yeah. Whether he scored 20-some points, no points. You gonna be the same person, yeah. and, and that that went a long way with me. I love I love that. This is what I want to know, man. You know, you didn't clearly seen your fair share of nice contracts when you was in the league. Mm-hmm. This question not about like you know, obviously you took care of mom, dude. You took care of home. Like, what did Bib do when you wanted to treat yourself? Like after you got that bag and you you know you got this situation, you got that situation. I want to like I might you might look at it like it was dumb now that you a grown man, but like what did you do? I to went treat and got yourself? a Rolls Royce. Ooh, mm. Double law. <laughs> Double law. Yeah, that phantom. one I'm talking yeah, about. Not convertible oh, drop, drop head. Oh, the convertible yeah. drop head. What color? Uh, black. Okay, see, he with your vibes. I get white <laughs> everything. Mm-hmm. I had to go get that, man. You one of the inaugural members of the Jordan brand. Like, what was it like when you got that call? Did, like, it was did from, you understand what exactly was oh, happening shit, at the I time? Got, or, like, how did you, like, what was all of that like? How did that play out for you? It was good because at first it was, I was talking with Puma. Mm-hmm. And so um, they sent Puma sent me a box, and I mean it was all like fluorescent. Like back then in the nineties, fluorescent colors weren't really in. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So it was like more soccer stuff they sent me. Yeah, they sent me a shoe that was like this long, <laughs> that was a size twelve. Like it was like it would look like it was that long. <laughs> and I, I told my, I said I can't wear it. I can't wear this. And so he's like, would you would you want to go with with Jordan? I said, shit, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was done. I'm sure you see it just like we see it. When you hear everybody talking about, you know, oh, man, the Jordan athletes, man, top five is Bivy, you know, or Ray or whoever. Like, I want to know, like, forget about it because we know as 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 the guys, we know that everybody had crazy, crazy, crazy. I still say all the time Ray is the, is yes. the GOAT because he had those championship runs yeah. in, the, in the brand. 
they do excellent when they know yeah. you're gonna go deep into the playoffs so you be ready and then the championship patch yeah. ring like patch like he's Ray is unchallenged. But yeah. for you, just personally, not about everybody else, like for you, your what what what's your starting five of like your favorite PEs you had? Cause you got the Sacramento wave, you had the uh Atlanta wave. Mm -hmm. Just what's your top five shoes you think you that you like if you had to pick? I'll go with the nines first. Which which patent team? leather uh sack. Sacramento. Yeah, I'll go with the five, Sacramento. Two, Atlanta. I remember those. Twelve, Sacramento, purple, and then I have to go twelve, Atlanta. What was the first low top? I'm thinking it's the five because I remember looking at them and I was like, can you make these <laughs> into a low? And he was like, yeah, we, I think we can. And then they cut into a low. So I was like, shit. If you get shit, you might be able to make everything yeah, in low. Low eights yeah. and everything. Yeah. Like, why, like, why lows? Because we so scared to twist our ankles and you I, went low. I don't know. I mean, just try to be different, I think. You know what I mean? I just. Were they lighter or something? Nah, but <laughs> I can't believe, like, I put my shoe in them now. Because, you know, you have to put an insole in them. I don't yeah. even know how my foot was coming out, like, would come out. I don't yeah. know how my foot even stayed in. Like, that's how low they were.